ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستضيه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصبيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تبنثن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد أيها الإخوة الكرام فقد أمرنا الله عز وجل أو حثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على قراءة سورة الكهف يوم الجمعة فقال من قرأ سورة الكهف يوم الجمعة أضاء له نور ما بين السماء والأرض إلى الجمعة التي تليها يعني أشرقت حياته وأنار الله قلبه وجعله مهتديا كما قال الله عز وجل وزدناهم هدى. So brothers, we have been encouraged by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to recite سورة الكهف every Friday or the night before Friday, Thursday night according to some scholars. Why? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said if you recite سورة الكهف that day, you'll have light between heaven and earth to the next Jum'ah. Means you'll have you'll be guided, you'll be inspired, you will know your way through to the next Jum'ah. So let's have some spotlights, as they say, to be inspired, to learn from this surah. <coughs> this surah, Surah al kahf it was revealed in Mecca. So it is addressing Mecca challenges. Mecca challenges Muslims living in Mecca. They do not have a community. They do not have a state. They don't have power. So they must have been thinking of what we must be thinking of right now. We are thinking of what? To have our own, to have our own say, our own power, our own community, where we can say, where we can draw the lines and put the plans for our young generations, for everyone to practice Islam. So what about Surah Al-Kahf? How it helped in this regard? Yes, it's very helpful. The foundations of any community to, are, are to be based on four things, and both of them are mentioned. All, all of them are mentioned in this Torah. First one is Dawa, and that's in the story of the young people who ran away with their religion, established a small Muslim community, and they were planning a long-term plan to practice Islam and promote it everywhere. The second one is wealth, money. Because we, without wealth, we will never be able to establish a good Muslim community. We will never have, we will never be able to enforce our plans. So, and that's here, we have the story of the Sahib al Jannatayn. The man whom Allah gave to Jannatayn, to big orchards, as the story goes in Surah Al Kahf. And more important than having wealth, is a concept, your view of money. As scholars always say, it should be in your hand, not in your heart. So it's like a water where the ships sail through. The ship will need the water to sail through, but if water goes inside the ship, it will sink. And that's how the Muslim goes with wealth. And that's the story of the man who was actually in fitna because of his wealth, but we still have the the voice of the Muslim mate of that one, who was telling him he should not do that. He should have a different view and different stand with this wealth. He should look at the wealth as it should be looked at from Islamic perspective. So that's the second one. So the first foundation is ilm, knowledge and da'wah. Second one was wealth. The, uh, the da'wah, we have da'wah. We have the, the wealth. And then we have knowledge. Without knowledge, we never be able to do anything. Without knowledge. And we have the example of Musa alayhi salam. The one chosen to be Kalibullah, the one whom Allah spoke to directly. 
without any middle people or middle whatever. Without Jibreel alayhi salam being in the middle, for example. So Allah talked to him directly. That's why he is called Kalimullah. However, Allah chose him to go in a hard journey. لَقَدْ لَقِيْنَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبًا He expressed his tiredness after a long journey looking for knowledge. Though he was the, the best one chosen by Allah. Allah said, إِنِّي اسْتَضَيْتُكَ عَلَى النَّاسِ بِرِسَالَاتِهِ وَبِكَلَامِهِ I have chosen you above all people to give my messages and talking to you directly. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa to go around, to go in unknown journey and to look, seek knowledge and to be, to be humble to his teacher, to his educator, Al-Khadr alayhi salam. And we have learned from this one. So this is the third foundation, knowledge. And then the fourth one is power. And by power here, we mean the political power. The power which decides the direction of the whole community. The power which decides the framework of education, of media, of everything. And actually, this is not Islamic at all in anywhere we look around in the world. So we have to, that's how, if you are looking for that, something like that, you have to have these four foundations as inspired by Surah Al-Kahf. The example of power is the example of uh, Dhul Qarnayn, that righteous man whom Allah gave the means of power to him and whom Allah guided and whom Allah introduced to us as a good example of a person of power. Because when you get power, when you have power, it's a big fitna. Big fitna. Anyone, you will see, you, me, anyone, we will be good as long as we are not trialed. If we are trialed, that will show which person we are. So if a person is in power, that's a big fitna for them to change. But this man has the means to go as far in the east and as far in the west as you can imagine. However, he had one, one line of life which is righteousness, which is correctiveness. See him. When he was helping people against the most corrupted tribes of Yajuj and Majuj, and he is refusing to take any reward, <coughs> and he is hoping only for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one else. So that's the Qarnay. So brothers, these are the four foundations for any Muslim or anyone who is planning or putting strategies for a good Muslim community. That is da'wah, that is wealth, that is knowledge, that is power, and it is narrated. In Allah Sultani, Quran. By the means of Sultan of power, political power, Allah deters mischief. Allah deters corruption on earth, which cannot be deterred by the Quran. So some people would be enough to say to them, the Allah said this is haram to stop. But some people will never stop before having a punishment, before having a penalty before seeing the consequences by their own eyes, before they do corruption in land. That's why Allah said, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانَ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدَ فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ الْكِتَاب والحديد ما المناسبة؟ لأنه ما من لم يرتدع بالكتاب بالقرآن يرتدع ويرد Bil-Hadid, Bil-Sultan. So, that is the meaning of the ayah in Surah Al-Hadid. Hadid means iron, means steel. And actually here it refers to the political power. Because these are the only power which can use this, which can use power, physical power, to stop corruption, to stop, to, to, to set penalties for corrupted people, and to isolate their evil from the whole community. Allah said here, Allah said he sent his prophets with the book and the mizan. Mizan literally means the scale. And here it means the standards of justice, standards of good and evil. So Allah is the one who decides what's good and what's wrong, what's right, what's wrong for people. And that is al-mizan. And Allah gave the prophets and messengers two things, al-kitab and he sent with them what? Al-hadid, iron, steel, the power which is used to deter people and stop them. Let's go through one of these foundations of, in Surah Al-Kahf, foundation of a Muslim community. 
And that is the da'wah. And that is the example of the young people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here in Surah Al-Kahf. We will not go in details, but we will have some lines. We'll have some lights on the, the general characteristics of these people. Allah says, Am hasibata. Do you believe or you think that the people of the cave were some wonder, one of the wonders of our wonders? So Allah always shows people his wonders. And it doesn't have to be wonderful. It doesn't have to be, I mean, it doesn't have to be exceptional to be wonderful. Everything we enjoy in our life is wonderful because it is coming from Allah. And if it is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we wouldn't enjoy it. We wouldn't have it. So Allah says, "If our fitri is in the cave, they said, 'Lord, Lord of the heavens and the earth, we will not pray for you from the sky.'" These young people, they look at the word fitri, and this word it doesn't only in Arabic it doesn't only mean young people, but it means also it refers also to their strength, to the energy, to the energy, to the young blood in these people, and actually. It doesn't have this young blood usually and mostly exist in the young people. However, it doesn't have to do with the age. It has to do with whoever is ready to sacrifice, who is who is whoever is ready to move, because this surah is all about movement, moving, being proactive, doing something. And you find these verbs of movement along the surah. So anyway, it has to do with whoever is ready to change. And accept the challenge and face this, uh, the community with the, the right thing. So here, these young people, they are together now. And they are declaring, they are making a statement of the work. So they are making their own constitution. They say, Our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and earth. So now they are looking to the bigger, biggest universe. The universe with the vastest, with the furthest dimensions you can imagine. And the Lord of all this is Allah. And then they have the vision also for their own community. The small world of them. Allah says, They said, And then they said, uh, Our people have taken gods besides Allah to worship. And we will never accept that. We will never go through this. So this is the constitution. This is the declaration of their work, of their constitution at the beginning. They have, they have an agreement. They didn't know each other, but they put this agreement together. In our, they said, our Lord is Allah. You will not worship anyone besides him. Our own people are worshiping <laughs> other gods. They have no proof of what they are doing is correct. They have no proof of that. And we will never assimilate, we will never accept such uh, misguidance of these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how he was helping these people. Allah made everything easy for them. وَإِذَا تَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَأُوُوا إِلَى الْكَهْفِ Go to the, or seek accommodation in the cave. So Allah inspired them. Allah guided them to go to the cave. Why? Because the place, the, the broader community where they live, where they are surrounded by corruption from everywhere, is not the best habitat. It's not the best, best nursery, nursing home for their thoughts to grow and to come to action. So, فَأُوُوا إِلَى الْكَهْفِ يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ وَيُهَيِّئْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِنْ فَقَارِ So Allah is spreading for them in the cave from His mercy. And He is preparing for them all the means of success. Uh, so, we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was taking care of them and how the sun would go around but not directly on them. And how they, they, Allah made them sleep for more than 300 years and all these others which tell about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was taking care of them and looking after them. I call them at Ismail and Astaghfirullah and welcome to Astaghfirullah.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وشر لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وشر أن سيدنا محمد رسول الله إمام المتقين اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته وسار على دربه واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين برادر سورة الكهف هي سورة الإيمان والعمل إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات إن لا نضيع أجر من أحسن عملا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات في الدوس مثلا وليس المؤمن بالذي يقول آمنت وهو كسول وهو نائم بل لابد أن يقوم وأن يعمل So brothers, we have Surah Al-Kahf We have two ayah in the middle and in the end of the surah These two ayah can tell us, can give us a key to the main purpose of this surah which is to believe and follow your iman with action You cannot just say I believe and that's it I am a mu'min and that's enough. Allah said in the middle, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believed and did righteous deeds. Did righteous. So that is the action. إِنَّ لَنُضِيعُ أَجَرَ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ عَمَلًا Allah will never waste the reward for those who do good deeds. And at the end of the surah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ نُزُلًا Those who believed and did righteous deeds. For them, Jannatul Firdaus is their hotel. Is their final destination. Is the hospitality Allah is preparing for them. So if you are looking for this one, what you have to do? You have to, you have to do good deeds after you say declare your iman. And that's exactly what the people of the cave did. Uh, they, they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are now having, having a plan to proceed with. So they are together in the cave. And the Quran said to us also the number. And the number actually was a bit controversial. So uh, the Quran did not decide how, how many they were. سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة ثالثهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم. So three, some will say they are three and their fourth is a dog. Uh, some will say they are five and their sixth is a dog. And some will say they are seven and their eighth is a dog. But the Quran did not decide which number exactly they were because this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. One of the scholars derived one good lesson. He said these people were in the cave looking for education, looking for tarbiyah, for good Islamic education. And he derived from this a family, like now they are living like a family, a family of education. I mean, if you want to make a group and a group of da'wah, a group of people, the least could be three. The, big, the maximum could be seven and the average could be five. But the number has to be odd number, or should be odd number. So anyway, these people, they were together in the cave. They were, they, they, they were one, like one mind. We always say like-minded people. They were like-minded people. And they trusted each other. Look at them when they sit. When they woke, woke up after 300 years, more than 300 years, they woke up. And they asked the very uh, legitimate question. They said, how many, how, how long have we have been sleeping? And the one said, a day or part of the day, but they did not take long. That is not a matter of arguing. That is not a, 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 that's not a topic to argue around and waste your time and your energy. And we do a lot. Waste our time, we do a lot. Waste our energy in matters which is of no benefit at all. So they are focusing. And then they said, Rabbukum a'lamu bima labistum. Your Lord knows best. How long we have been here? And then what's more important? This is one ayah or part of the ayah of the Quran shows the teamwork, the spirit, the common spirit between or among these, this group of people. They trusted each other. They are all the same. They are all they delegated one, one of them, and whatever he does, whatever he does, would never, would never, none of them will challenge him. None of them will say to him, you did wrong, or we did not allow you to do this. So, one of you, it doesn't matter. So, if they are all equal, none of them is different to the others. With your own money. So, they had their own money with them in the cave. You hear about people who say like, we will we just put our trust in Allah and go without having the means with them. This is not Islamic at all. The Prophet ﷺ was always ready to the worst scenario, worst case scenarios, and he was preparing himself. 
and he was putting his full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they had the money with them. They are not financed, financed by any foreign power or any other state from our side, uh, others outside. Because in this case, it would be conditional financing and fun, uh, conditional funding. So they have their own money with them. Let him, he didn't, they did not ask for the most delicious food. They are asking for azka. Azka means the purest, the best. The best here means halal and healthy. It doesn't have to be the, the, like the most delicious dishes or food they are looking for. Let him be, be very gentle, very subtle, very delicate. Like if you are in a teamwork like this, if you have a long-term strategy to do work, you have to turn yourself away from any side issues. So when you go, for example, to buy food, do not come back with the, loaded with troubles from the community, from like fighting with someone here or there, you have to be very delicate, you have to be very subtle. They did not like, let him not make anyone feel who you are. Anyone, not non-trusted people. So they have to be cautious, not only from the people they don't trust or people that they don't know, but everyone, no one so ever, no one whatsoever should know about you. To the end of the ayat. Brothers, there is a lot uh, to learn from the <coughs> Surah Al-Kahf, which we recite every Jum'ah. And the Surah is all about moving, moving forward, not staying stagnant in one, in one place and not doing anything. You have to do something. You have to move. Otherwise, like you will find yourself at the end of the day, uh, the last one, you will find yourself behind everyone else who did work and who was a proactive person in the community and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعلنا وإياكم من الذين استمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم أكرمنا ولا تهنا اللهم أعطنا ولا تحرمنا اللهم ارفعنا ولا تضعنا اللهم كلنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم انصر أهل غزة المستضعفين اللهم انصر أهل غزة المستضعفين اللهم إنهم حفاة فاحملهم اللهم إنهم عرايا فاكسهم، اللهم إنهم مرضى فداويهم، اللهم إنهم جوعى فأطعمهم، اللهم إنهم مظلومون فانتصر لهم، اللهم إنهم مظلومون فانتصر لهم، اللهم أنت حسبنا وأنت نعم الوكيل، اللهم ثبت أقدام المجاهدين، اللهم اربط على قلوبهم، اللهم اربط على قلوبهم، اللهم هيئ لهم من أمرهم الفقر، اللهم ربنا آتهم من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لهم من أمرهم الفقر يا رب العالمين. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى. وإنها الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزيدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقيموا الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا